Well, the sound of Maud Billy is a blending of pop music epitomized by bands like the Birds and the Monkees, imbued with some good old American hillbilly sensibility. Maud Billy is also the name of the new record by my guests, the Boxmasters. If the name Boxmasters sounds familiar, there may be a couple of reasons why. Firstly, Maud Billy is the Los Angeles-based trio's third album in the last year alone. Yes, this is a band with ambition. Secondly, the Boxmasters principal songwriter, singer, and drummer is a guy named Billy Bob Thornton, whose other job, uh, some of the time, is Oscar-winning screenwriter, actor, and director. While Billy Bob Thornton's name is most often linked to his cinematic endeavors, the Boxmasters is anything but a diversion from the silver screen. He's always intended to make music, and he just got sidetracked. These days, music is a major priority in his life, and it's something he's obviously embracing. And I'm pleased to have all the members of the Boxmasters, Billy Bob Thornton, J.D. Andrew, Mike Butler, and Danny Baker, here in Studio Q. Hello, boys. Hey, how's it going? Good to have you here. Three albums in the past year? <laughs> what? Yeah. That's that, that seems ambitious. That's the, that's the ones that have been released. You yeah, know, we've, we've recorded about five. There's though. more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys formed uh, Billy Bob. You, you guys formed only in the last couple of years, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> How so? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, did when <clears throat> when did the, when did the band form? I'm not sure what that means. Oh, well, when did you guys first start playing together? Uh, we started about two years ago, and uh, we haven't stopped since we, uh, once since we got the ball rolling. <laughs> uh, and and you, you've, you've made three records in that time. We've actually made about five records, and, uh, of course, uh, the first one, The Boxmasters and Mod Billy, and the one that'll be out later in the year called Bellflower are all double CDs. Uh, one disc of all originals, one disc of all covers, and uh, they, uh, yeah. So we've got those, and then we've put out a Christmas record, uh, and then we've got two other ones that we've uh, got mostly done as well. So we'll figure out something to do with right. those. As and well. and you're currently on tour with Willie Nelson and Ray Price and Ray it's Price, a, yeah. And so it's a fantastic bill. Have you done shows before this run with Willie Nelson before? Yeah, we did a run last uh, November and December for a few weeks with Willie in the States. And it was amazing. It was great, you know. What do you what do you learn from Willie Nelson, Billy Bob? I've never met him. <laughs> <laughs> are you being ironic or are you being serious? I don't really know him. You don't you've never met Willie Nelson? Well I said hello to him once, a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. You guys don't really hang out on tour. Um don't you don't know, know what I mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I get the impression that you're going to answer with it? You don't know what I mean if I <coughs> ask you things. Uh, so how is it that you got, did Willie choose you guys to come on tour with him? Shit, I don't know. Right. Um, all right. Well, this new record, double record, uh, half original songs, half covers. Um, tell me about the decision to, to include an entire record of covers. Well, early on, we decided that, you know, uh, we wanted to pay tribute to the music that's inspired us, you know, growing up and, you know, through our lives. And uh, we, uh, you know, really early, you know, you know, we're basically hillbillies that are really influenced by the British invasion. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to take all those influences. And there's so many great songs, you know, through the years that, that we love that, you know, it's got to pay tribute to them and, you know, help reintroduce, you know, music history to people so that people, you know, when they hear our version that maybe they'll go back and listen to, you know, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and Michael right. Nesmith and Chad and Jeremy and right. everyone that we loved, you it, know, it over seems, the years. It seems like an interesting fusion at first, Mike, to, to, to have uh, uh, old school sort of British uh, first wave 60s music fused with southern american twang to a certain extent did it always seem natural to you yeah i mean those are the things that we were influenced by so you know it wasn't calculated you know we when we got into the studio uh, the first time and, and did the first batch of songs it it's just the way it came out now just the way we sound I and mean, we were all sort of similarly influenced by the same kind of artists and same genres so it it just ended up being that way we recorded mm. a couple of songs and then we sat back and was like wow that kind of sounds like you know 
British invasion, you know, mixed with the stuff like Buck Owens and, and um, Del Reeves and stuff that we right. listened to. Anyway. And that was true for you, Billy Bob, growing up? It was a, a sort of a combo of Stones and Monkeys and, and Buck Owens? I just like baseball when I was a kid. <laughs> well, and you almost became a professional baseball player, right? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but you, you didn't love music when you were a kid? Um, I, I, I subscribed to a magazine called um, Famous Monsters of Filmland, which uh, the publisher was a guy named Forrest J. Ackerman who passed away recently. Hmm. Do you remember what you were you were listening to musically when you were a kid? Well, they had a contest where you could build your own model, and it could be like a King Kong, or it could be uh, it could be anything from something that you created yourself to like one of the monsters that was actually in the uh, well, you know, in, in some of the uh, of the magazines like uh, it could be Frankenstein all the way to Phantom of the Opera and they, they made these plastic models in those days uh, that you could buy uh, and put together but these this was like a thing you could create your own world of it you know make build telephone poles make the railroad tracks and everything and um, I, I actually uh, did enter it once I didn't win anything but uh, but I gave it a shot and uh, but it was pretty uh, it was a big deal for us kids in those days. Uh, I'm the, and what and where's the music? Where's the music fit into that? Uh, music? <laughs> I didn't, no, it was a, it was a monster magazine. Right, right. Uh, but I'm but given that you seem to be quite passionate about music, I was wondering about your. Would you say that to Tom Petty? Would I say that he's passionate about music? Y yeah. Yeah. Really? Would you explain why it's not a hobby? Would I explain why it's not a hobby? Are you reacting to the fact that I said? Yeah, I am. I am. Since you're instructed not to talk about shit like that, yeah, I am reacting to that. Yeah. <clears throat> I wasn't instructed to. Uh, I'm. In, I'm instruct. I'm not really instructed. You guys are here as a band. You're performing, mm -hmm. uh, but I. Well, I, the producer was instructed. Right, so but, but somewhere along the way. Because I mentioned that you were an actor and a uh, screenwriter. Well, first of all, that wasn't wasn't supposed to be mentioned either. You know, but uh, but that's just giving context, right? I mean, I'm happy to interview you guys as a band, but I but you know, for the listeners, we're giving context for who you are. That's part of your trajectory, isn't it? Not really. It's not. No. You 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 would prefer me to only do this interview, not mentioning at all, just yeah, to clarify, that's correct, yes. at all that you've that's ever correct. done anything in terms of acting, screenwriting. That's correct. Okay, but do you know that people are listening across the country and across North America, yeah. and, and they might think that's odd that I would not mention anything to do with your past. Well, I think it's odd that you have to smoke inside a white stripe outside. <laughs> that's also odd. Yeah, yeah. But that, you know, the, yeah, but that's a little different. That's a rule and regulation. I'm just trying to do a, a show and give people context for, yeah. for who you guys are. Well, there's plenty of context without all that. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I mean, it does occur to me that... Uh, you know, the, the producers told me that you didn't want to, uh, that, I, that, I, that they didn't want to focus on questions around your uh, acting career, et cetera. Right. And I'm cool with that because uh, I, I'm happy to, to, to talk to you as, as musicians. It, it does also occur to me, though, that you're, you're a pretty new band. Uh, and part, one of the reasons why you, got, you get attention <coughs> is because of the career you have. We're not really new. You're not? Well, I've, says, I've, made, I've made eight albums. I know you've made a lot of them, but the, how how uh, long have the Boxmasters been together for? I don't know. A couple of years, maybe. So, uh, even the greatest bands in the world don't. I mean, you, the part of the attention that you're getting is because of the great career you've had in, in other ways. I'm, I'm. What I'm explaining is, I'm not trying to be insulting to your musical. Well, what I'm explaining is, as we said, to not talk about shit like that, and we also said. Uh, that we didn't want to hear anything about how this is my first love. You wouldn't say that to Tom Petty, would you? I understand music is your first love. Well, my first love was a chick named Lisa Cohen. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So I think I think the only reason we would do that is is as a point of entry. So for people to. So if do you want to continue this if we talk about music? Uh, that'd be great. Okay. Well, um. 
if we can call a truce, then I can ask you questions about music because I was asking you and you didn't seem to want to answer. But I'm 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 cool to talk about that. So do you, can you talk about your musical influences? Because there is an interesting fusion in this on, on this record. Yeah, it's um, a mixture of the British invasion with hillbilly music, something that I know more about than, say, a band who's 20 years old that you wouldn't say that to. Yeah. Uh, I grew up as pretty much a music historian, so, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, cosmic cowboy music. Do, do you, is there a... Um uh, do you know other? Uh, can you think of other bands who who've been doing what you guys are are doing here? Or not lately? To? Yeah, not in the last thirty years. No. And and how do you find? Um, is it is it difficult? Like it's interesting. You're opening for Willie Nelson. Um, I'm I'm assuming it's an old, somewhat older country audience. Do, do different audiences react to you different ways? I mean, there's quite a, it's quite an eclectic double record. You know, you go, you read, run the gamut from songs that sound sort of country to songs that sound rock and roll. Well, the good news is that Willie's audience is pretty eclectic. Uh, he has everything from bikers to, you know, old people to young people, and uh, so somewhere in there you find. You know, an audience, or at least we do in Europe and the United States. Uh, Canadian audiences seem to be very reserved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've heard that before. Uh, you know, I, I, we we tend to play places where people throw things at each other, and um, uh, here they just sort of sit there. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't matter what you say to them. Even when you're playing, but you're playing theaters as well, right? Is that part? Some of are it? theaters. Some are like stadiums, and or whatever they you want to call it. But um, uh, it's very, uh, yeah, very, um, well, it's mashed potatoes with no gravy, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we got some gravy up here as well. Yeah, yeah you do, actually, yeah. on a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's one of, it might be considered one of our national dishes, actually. Uh, absolutely, I've seen that in several uh, shops. Uh, okay, well, listen. Why don't we, you guys are going to play a song for us? Uh, what, what, what were you going? What were you planning on playing? Uh, the guys are going to do an instrumental version of a song called "Turn It Over," which is on this record that we have now. Okay, you know you're not going to play. Um, well, I'm a drummer. And you don't have your drums here. No, we don't cart those around at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, how about we? <laughs> let's hear the instrumental version from the Boxmasters. You guys up for it? Sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, this is the Box Masters. This is JD Andrew, Mike Butler, and Danny Baker. Uh, and Billy Bob doesn't have his drums, so he's not going to be performing on this version of the Box Masters. Billy Bob, thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Have a good rest of your tour. Uh, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, the the Boxmasters currently on tour with Willie Nelson, playing tonight and tomorrow night at Toronto's Massey Hall, Montreal this Friday, London on Saturday. Ever met Willie Nelson? I well, said hello to him once. He's a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. You guys don't really hang out on tour. Um, I, I don't you don't know. know what I mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I get the impression that you're going to answer with it? You don't know what I mean if I <coughs> ask you things. Uh, so how is it that you got, did Willie choose you guys to come on tour with him? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Well, this new record, double record, uh, half original songs, half covers. Um, tell me about the decision to to include an entire record of covers. Well, early on, we decided that you know uh, we wanted to pay tribute to the music that's inspired us, you know, growing up and you know through our lives. And uh, we, uh, you know, really early, you know, you know, we're basically hillbillies that are really influenced. Well, the sound of Maud Billy is a blending of pop music epitomized by bands like the Birds and the Monkees, imbued with some good old American hillbilly sensibility. 
Mod Billy is also the name of the new record by my guests, the Box Masters. If the name Box Masters sounds familiar, there may be a couple of reasons why. Firstly, Mod Billy is the Los Angeles based trio's third album in the last year alone. Yes, this is a band with ambition. Secondly, the Box Masters' principal songwriter, singer, and drummer is a guy named Billy Bob Thornton, whose other job, uh, some of the time, is Oscar winning screenwriter, actor, and director. While Billy Bob Thornton's name is most often linked to his cinematic endeavors, the Box Masters is anything but a diversion from the silver screen. He's always intended to make music, and he just got sidetracked. These days, music. Music is a major priority in his life, and it's something he's obviously embracing. And I'm pleased to have all the members of the Boxmasters, Billy Bob Thornton, J.G. Andrew, Mike Butler, and Danny Bates. Influenced by the British invasion, and uh, you know, we just wanted to take all those influences. And there's so many great songs, you know, through the years that that we love. That you know, it's got to pay tribute to them, and you know, help reintroduce you know music history to people, so that people, you know, when they hear our version that maybe they'll go back and listen to, you know, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and Michael Nesmith and Chad and Jeremy and right. everyone that we loved, you it, know, it over seems, the years. It seems like an interesting fusion at first, Mike, to, to, to have uh, uh, old school sort of British uh, first wave 60s music fused with Southern American twang to a certain extent. Did it always seem natural to you? Yeah, I mean, those are the things that we were influenced by. So, you know, it wasn't calculated. You know, we, when we got into the studio uh, the first time and, and did the first batch of songs, it, it's just the way it came out. Now. And Mod Billy and the one that'll be out later in the year called Bellflower are all double CDs, uh, one disc of all originals, one disc of all covers. And uh, they, uh, yeah, so we've got those and then we've put out a Christmas record uh, and then we've got two other ones that we've uh, got mostly done as well, so... We'll figure out something to do with nice right. as and, well. And you're currently on tour with Willie Nelson? And Ray Price. And Ray it's Price. A, yeah. And so it's a fantastic bill. Have you done shows before this run with Willie Nelson before? Yeah, we did a run last uh, November and December for a few weeks with Willie in the States. And it was amazing. It was great. You know. What do you, what do you learn from Willie Nelson, Billy Bob? I've never met him. <laughs> are you being ironic or are you being serious? I don't really know him. You don't. You've never been here in Studio Q. Hello, boys. Hey, how's it going? Good, Good to have morning. you here. Three albums in the past year. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's that, that seems ambitious. That's the, that's the ones that have been released. You know, yeah, we've, we've recorded about five. There's of more. Them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys formed uh, Billy Bob. You, you guys formed only in the last couple of years, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> How so? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, did when when did the, when did the band form? I'm not sure what that means. Oh well, when did you guys first start playing together? Uh, we started about two years ago, and uh, we haven't stopped since we uh, when since we got the ball rolling. <laughs> uh, and and you, you've you've made three records in that time. We've actually made about five records. And, uh, of course, uh, the first one, the Box Masters. And